Oh, yeah, that's an interesting question. Charles, why are you and IOHK giving special promotion treatment to Meld in the Sunday Swap? Your influence is creating a centralized marketplace and making more competition unfair for competing projects. Uh, this is the problem when you have this pro commercialization custodial issue. Um, we're not giving Sunday or Meld special treatment. Uh, the reality is we've been talking to, I think, three, four dozen different DAP providers, um, and we've been co-developing, working with them to kind of understand more about the model. Right now, it looks like the nearest launches are going to occur with things like Sunday Swap, and those are going to put the highest degree of strain on the Cardano network and have the highest potential either to showcase the benefits of Cardano or showcase problems. So it's in everybody's best interest, the entire ecosystem, that these first wave of DEXs and these first wave of DABs have a good launch experience. Uh, otherwise, the problem is we're going to get hammered uh, by very negative, dishonest press. As we saw, for example, uh, with MinSwap and this whole one transaction per block lie. At the moment, on testnet, Sunday Swap's performance is significantly better than Uniswap on Ethereum. It's just a fact, and we've seen it. We're empirically demonstrating it. Well, they are the Sunday Swap team, but we as a community have demonstrated that. And that's just an example. And there's been a lot of back and forth, and already a lot of design ideas, the ways to improve the Plutus application backend, improve the Plutus language, and things we can prioritize as we roll out pipelining and input endorsers to make it easier for them to operate. Okay, this is how it goes. Now, if you're a DAP developer and you want to have this kind of relationship with us, all you got to do is talk to our DAP developer programs we have that Jeremy Maroney and others in the organization have been spinning up. And you know what will happen is you'll start having direct conversations with Jean Frederic in our development teams and the Plutus core team at some point. You know, and there's a way to collaborate back and forth. And those channels are known. Uh, we know a lot of these guys from the Plus Pioneers program. So it's not about favorites. It's like the love is spread around. All people can have the love. It's just about asking, okay, what's near horizon? And what do we need to make sure the ecosystem can absorb so that there's a good launch, good experience, and that people can honestly see the best of the platform instead of learning their way in? Now, we could just be completely hands off and say, okay, we're going to take a position of absolute neutrality. No one can talk to us. We will say nothing like the IRS does with your taxes. You go to them and say, I'm not quite sure how much I owe you. Can you help me? It's not our job to follow your taxes. But if you get it wrong, we punish you. Bra. And keep seven years of records in case we audit you. There's 86,000 people that are carrying that mentality coming in. Uh, so it's, uh, not our job to be the IRS. Yeah, we could be, uh, and I don't think that's any good for the ecosystem because first it's going to slow down the evolution and progress of Plutus. Second, there's going to be a wave of dApps, which aren't so good and people will lose money. There's already stuff that's coming that may be questionable. Uh, and third, if we want people to get on board with the certification program and have a big wave of certified dApps. We kind of need a, some leverage in that relationship. Kind of need a little care and say, hey, you know, maybe we help you guys out a little bit with, you know, auditing your smart contracts or doing code reviews or, you know, sharing algorithms or these types of things. And also gives us a say in potentially convincing them to open source part of their code and make part of their code public and visible. So we create community best practices that occur. So if you give, you can request. If you give nothing, you can't. It's just that simple. And it's not about favorites. It's just simply about getting the first wave out successfully. I don't know about you guys, but I am damn tired of being attacked and lied about. You know, I went to a fucking mindfulness retreat for a whole week just to like undo the trauma of the last eight years <laughs> and all this stuff. It's damn relentless every day. Every day. And it, the most frustrating is the stuff that's not true. It's one thing when someone criticizes you because you own it. Okay, sure. You don't like my shirt. You don't like the glasses I wear. You don't like the lobster on the mic. You don't like my introduction. Okay. These opinions, whatever. It's another thing. When they know they're lying and they do it anyway, and the media reports that they carry it, and we have to firefight for an entire week. 
And the problem is that as dApps are turning online, because smart contracts are here, every week there's a new flavor to talk about. And if every week there's a Coindesk article or Cointelegraph article that says, oh, look how bad they are, look at all this stuff, look at the security flaws, that stuff sticks over time. It's like molten tar. It's really hard to scrub off and you have a lot of burns after you finally get it off. Okay, and I don't want that for the ecosystem. So, you know, what do we do? Well, I think we've created a very measured approach. If people come to us and ask for help and they're at a certain scale and maturity and it's very clear that that project is launching and in many cases endorsed by the community, either through a successful ISPO or through a successful catalyst raise or some other social signal that you, the Cardano community, seem to like these people, it does make sense to say, okay, yeah, have conversations with our engineers. Yeah, okay, have some conversations with our uh, uh, science people uh, and also the architects in the platform who are trying to plan out the three hard forks so we can figure out what we need to prioritize for February and June to try to make your lives a little easier so you have the strongest possible launch and thus the biggest possible benefit to Cardano. Doesn't that make sense? Now, we don't go ahead and say, well, you come in, but not you, and you're an asshole, and I don't like you, you're poopy face. We don't do that. No, it's just about saying once you get to a certain scale, there needs to be some organ. Now, that's a trial run, and what happens is over time, what you can do is federate and decentralize uh, those, those things. It just happens we're the domain experts on Cardano because we invented it. We built it. So we understand it. We know every line of code. We wrote the code. We know every formal specification. We wrote the specifications. We know how the protocol works because our company with great collaborators wrote the protocols and they went through peer review. So it's the single most qualified entity in the world to in any way uh, opine on how these things uh, operate and where things can go wrong is probably our people. And so if we share that knowledge, all it means is the first wave of dApps are faster, more efficient, less likely to fail, and ultimately uh, showcase the high points of the platform. Now, that doesn't mean they're perfect. It doesn't mean they won't fail. It doesn't mean they won't have problems. It doesn't mean they won't have bugs. It doesn't mean they're secure. Nothing can give you complete certainty there. Okay. It's a game of numbers and it's a game of probabilities. It's a game of inches. And that's what we were doing.